All right, well, I am so excited for the first of our formal presentations that we have today, which is really quite a treat because we get a two-in-one for this particular one. This is both a lecture and a recital, and both of these will be um, done for us by the same very talented individual. The name of our first presentation is Gomidas Vartabed, the contribution of this beloved priest and musician to Armenian sacred music. I mean, our presenter is none other than Deacon Rubik Mailian, who is the artistic director and the conductor of the Detroit Armenian Chorale and the Gomidas Choir of St. John Armenian Church in Southfield, Michigan. He holds graduate level music and theology degrees from the University of Houston, St. Nersa Seminary, and St. Vladimir Seminary. He's an accomplished vocalist and has performed with numerous nationally recognized opera theaters and symphony orchestras. Rubik has presented many articles and lectures on the subject of Armenian music, especially history, practice, and the performance of early Armenian church music in the Eastern and Western dioceses of the Armenian Church in the United States and in Europe. He is an active member of the American Choral, uh, Choral Directors Association and has published and has served on the diocesan liturgical committees for the publication of new books and as a chairman of the Sacred Music Council at the Eastern Diocese in New York for many years. So it's my pleasure to invite Deacon Rubik. Thank you, Der Harutun. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Uh, this is a beautiful church with beautiful acoustics, so hopefully you can enjoy um, this uh, lecture for another 45 minutes or so. Uh, I gave this, uh, uh, I, I gave a talk on Gomidas um, two years ago on uh, our first uh, um, Sacred Music Council Festival. And at that time I included a lot of information about biography and, and uh, his works and, and his contribution. Uh, today also, I'm going to talk a little bit about those, but not too much about the biography, so I'm cutting a, a lot with, the, with Serpazan's um, suggestion. I'm going to um, um, do more uh, songs and more practical, I'll spend some time on uh, practical aspects of um, Gomidas's work. So, uh, just briefly, um, uh, let us start saying that Gomidas was a priest, musician, ethnomusicologist, composer, arranger, choir director, and singer. Uh, eight, oops. Let's see what happened there. What technical? Uh, while Michael is, uh, oh, they're hired, uh, is fixing this, yes. Let's try one more time and see if this goes, okay. Yeah, it works now. Okay, so Gomidas, um, um, his name was Sogomon Sogomonian. He was a priest, musician, ethnomusicologist, composer, arranger, choir director and singer. Uh, 1869, October 8, he was born in Kutahia. In 1880, became an orphan at age 11. 1881, uh, October entered uh, Echmiadzin Seminary. At that time, Kevork IV was Catholicos of the time. At age, um, what is happening with at age 11, uh, or 12 actually, um, out of 20 students, candidates, one was to be selected to accompany the local priest, Terzakian, to go to Echmiadzin. And by the grace of God, that one student was Solomon. He only spoke Turkish at that time, but he could sing in Armenian. This is a famous painting by Krikor Khanjian, uh, depicting Komidas' meeting the Catholicos of the time, Kevork IV. On the left side, you see Kevork IV is sitting, and 
uh, priest uh, who is presenting him, Terzakian, is on the right side of your screen, and Gomidas is the 12 year old boy there standing. The Catholicos speaks to him in Armenian, but he does not understand. Uh, then the Catholicos tells him in Turkish, uh, because Catholicos also was from Turkey. Uh, this is an, he says, this is an Armenian school. You need to know Armenian to, go, uh, to get into this school. So Gomidas answers, I am here to learn Armenian. Then the Catholicos ask him to sing a song. And while Gomidas sings, tears come down from uh, Catholicos' eyes. And the rest is the history. He accepts him. And um, Gomidas starts studying at the Kevorkian Seminary. Uh, soon he become, uh, became known as um, the little singer boy in the seminary. During the service, he was asked to stand next to the Catholicos throne to sing uh, so that he could hear him. So things were good uh, until one year, because after one year, uh, Kevork IV passed away. Kevork IV was very good patron of Komitas um, uh, or, or Sogomon at that time. Um, he graduated from the seminary. Uh, let me just put uh, some, um, well, probably it is hard to see, but uh, quickly let me just say that he graduated from the seminary in 1893. He then taught at the seminary and organized and conducted the seminarian choirs. Um, at the same time, he collected songs from villages with the help of the seminarians. Uh, 1892, Gomidas uh, found another big patron when Megerdich Khrim, uh, Khrimian, known as Khrimian Hayrik, was elected uh, as Catholicos. He became very close to the Catholicos. He was assigned to teach music to Catholicos' nieces and he was often a guest in their home for dinner. 1895, he left the seminary to study in Tbilisi and ended up studying harmony with Magariak Malia. Uh, later, he was able to persuade the Catholicos to send him to conservatory in Berlin, where he studied music, composition, voice, history of music, and performance for three years, from 1896 through 1899. Um, his three teachers uh, laid the foundation for his study of early Armenian chaz notation and his arrangements of songs in such a way to preserve their distinctive Armenian um, character. Um, so, he then continued after he came back to uh, Echmiadzin after he finished his studying. He actually didn't finish, but he was uh, called to come back. And in three years, after three years, he came back to seminary. He started teaching at the seminary. Then um, he then uh, continued traveling to villages and um, uh, began notating village songs. Uh, his collection of songs are printed in 14 volumes. In 1907, another big patron of his, Chrimian Hayrik, passed away, and his support system gets cut at that time uh, by the elected clergy uh, of that time. In 1910, he left Ejmiadzin and went to Istanbul. Uh, his dream was to establish a national music conservatory, but he never achieved his goal. He organized a mixed choir of 300 singers called Kusan, and he traveled to cities and countries uh, giving lecture and concerts. In Paris, he gave, gave many, many lectures regarding Armenian music. And finally, in April 1915, Komitas was arrested together with many outstanding Armenian writers, businessmen, published publicists, physicians and lawyers, and was deported to the interiors of Anatolia, where he witnessed the brutal killing of his friends and Armenian people in general. Um, and then due to inter, um, intervention of two Turkish writers and ambassador, uh, American ambassador Henry Morgenthau, 
he was free to return to Istanbul. Um, shortly after, he went to Paris because of his death issues, uh, healthy, health issues, I'm sorry. He was hospitalized in a um, psychiatric hospital in France in 1916, where he remained until his death in 1935. So this was a kind of very um, short kind of biography that I gave you. Uh, can go online, and there's a lot of um, uh, articles about um, his biography you can read if you need. Now, um, Gomitas uh, was very fortunate to live at the time of, of Reformation and to have bright classmates' friends. I, I have a few names of his classmates and contemporaries who were giants of Armenian music, literature, and arts. And to name just a few, Magar Yekmalian was one of them, Manuk Aperian, uh, the uh, famous philologist. Um, then Hrachi Acharyan, linguist, etymologist, he was another one. Hanos Terlemazian, the artist, actually was the one that actually he was living when he was in, with uh, Terlemazian when he was in Istanbul. Uh, and the, the two were very good um, friends. Hovhannes Tumanyan, the poet writer, Avedik Isahagian, another writer, uh, Ghazaro Sagayan, another writer, Kevork uh, Pashinchagian, artist painter, as you saw that one, uh, Arshak Chobanian, um, writer, journalist, poet, um, Ashuk Jivan also was contemporary with him, Vertanes Papazian, writer, Spiridon Melikian, another musician, also was. And then Armenak Shahmuradian, uh, a famous tenor, who was his friend also, studying at the same time at the, as at the um, seminary. Uh, then last one, Karikin Levonian, artist painter, um, was the one. Often uh, these uh, intellectuals uh, would gather together in a room called the Upper Room in Echmiadzin and exchange thoughts in music, literature, read poems, view paintings, discuss politics, and etc. Uh, these gatherings would encourage creativity to write new poems, paint, write new music to present at the next gathering. So perhaps uh, this was the reason that uh, uh, and, and his personality, his, uh, he, was, he had a lot of friends, um, and he, his friends did not refuse helping him collect these songs. We always think that Komidas collected all these songs by himself, going to the villages and uh, collecting those and bringing back and notating them. And, and that was not the case. Actually, when he was living in the uh, seminary, uh, he had asked all the seminarians, uh, that any time you go back to your village or any time you have assignment going to, um, like visiting uh, a parish or some church, try to bring one song for me. And, and uh, often uh, seminarians will come back and say, hey, I heard this song from this village that I visited like yesterday or this and that. And, and he would basically get those and, and start writing them down and notating them. Or if he was not sure that they were singing right, he, was go, he, he would go back there and, and notate those himself and come back. But that's how many of those seminarians actually helped him uh, to um, collect those songs. And it was not just uh, himself. Um, and uh, so that is how... Um, we have all these 14 volumes now that it was printed in Armenia. Uh, these songs were created by villages who did not even have an elementary education. They were simple songs describing nature, animals, birds, and their everyday lives. Gomidas was very careful to keep them in their original version. In the first volume of his Kanar publication, he gave very clear instruction as to how to perform these songs. Now, I would like to stop here and uh, give you a sample of his um, folk songs. Um, these songs were collected, 
collected between 1903 to 1910. Um, the first song I'm going to present uh, is called Kele Kele, Kelkit Mernem. Um, now, if I give you the translation of this, it really doesn't make sense in, in uh, people, you know, in uh, American-born, basically, mentality. Um, the translation is, um, walk, walk, I die for your walking. So you need to understand that literally, Mernem uh, is, is, is dying, basically. But uh, actually here it means I love you so much that I'm willing to sacrifice my life for you, um, for your walking, for your everything. You know, and um, uh, loving quail, wounded quail, oak quail, black quail. Um, so if, you, if I go back to the picture of quail, the, the bird, and then you will see um, the second verse says, uh, loving quail, wounded quail. Um, yeah, that's the refrain that repeats. But uh, the third verse says, um, your bright light of ray, loving quail. Um, let's see. Uh, I die for your veil. Look at there. It, 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 that, that little thing that comes off the uh, quail, the villagers actually describe this as a veil of, of the and, and it is, a, you know, very interesting kind of description that these songs have. But, but this is a kind of love song. So you need to understand that um, villagers, actually, this was their inter entertainment. They would go in a field and see these quails are basically walking together. They are basically... Um, um, trying sometimes, you know, talk to each other, dance with each other, and, and those things were making kind of very sense for them to uh, love these birds. Uh, and, and they were, they were, uh, um, it, they were kind of um, describing that as when they are in love with somebody too. Uh, and, and that is why uh, this is a kind of song that it is a, um, describing somebody who is in love with somebody. Um, so, before I go further, let me just uh, sing this. I'm sure you have heard this because um, it is done very often. Uh, get my pitch.
have another song, a folk song. Uh, you will hear uh, two songs which Gomidas arranged one following the other. Uh, the first song starts slow, describing the dark cloud covering the mountain of Alagyas. Now, I've kind of tried to find out month of Alagyas, is it the same as the Aragats mountain that we have? And in that time it was called Alagyas. Um, it seems that that was the one, because I didn't find any other mountain in Turkey that is Alagaz instead of Aragaz. So I believe that that was the mountain that they were referring to, peasants, you know, were referring to that. Um, so this song is uh, slow, describing the dark cloud covering the mountain of Alagaz, and then there are some nonsense nice words saying, why, le, 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 which Basically, um, uh, it's uh, expressing the sorrow by Le Le Le. Um, the brother has saddled his horse to leave. Oh, my beloved mother, or by Le Le Le, oh, my beloved mother. This is um, um, and, and saying, you know, why Le Le Le, mother, what, what is going on in, in your mind? Um, and then this follows with uh, a very bright tempo song about an incense tree. Um, now, when I uh, tell you about the kind of literary translation of this, also is not going to make sense. But uh, it says um, there is an incense tree by our door and another one by your door. Uh, the trees are bearing fruit, Gulumjan, my dear little beloved Gulumjan. And then um, second verse continues, uh, there is an incense tree by our door, by, and then another one by your door, Gulumjan. Uh, a colorful canary uh, hops from branch to branch, Gulumjan. The tree swings from side to side, Yulumjan and gives lullaby to the beautiful beloved Yar. Um, so that is the meaning of it. When I told this actually to my wife, uh, you know, she was saying incense tree, incense tree. What is that? In we didn't think, we didn't know that. that my, my my wife, by the way, is, is born in the U.S., so uh, um, uh, she has that. Um, you know, she doesn't sometimes understand the um, Armenian kind of mentality. Um, it is, and, and she hasn't seen. She said, I didn't know that there was an incense tree. I said, yes, the incense that we get from here, it comes from a tree. It, there's incense that we burn here, it comes with it, uh, from a tree. And it's, it's, it's the sap of the tree, actually, that we, that we get. So, um, that is why there, there is an incense tree. So um, that is what it's talking about. And, and the birds, you know, are in there and flying from one to another one and uh, kind of um, playing with each other. So this is also the second one is a happy one. So starts with a kind of sad one, goes to the a little bit um, happy one. Okay. So let us start this one. Also, Yeah, 
And then goes back again to how like does, the slow one, and then comes back to the second verse of Kangita. So because of uh, time refrain, I'm not going to sing the second verse and everything, but that is usually the... And Gomidas has this kind of uh, way of arranging these songs, that one slow comes from, the next comes a faster one. Um, to, um, and, and I guess that's how he, uh, he um, heard those things, basically. Some of them, he put them together, one following the other one, this one with this one. But uh, some of them, um, the uh, villagers did that way, too. Um, now, the reason I stop here, because a little, um, there is a little angel here who also sings a Gomidas song, and I want to invite her to come here, Maria, to come and sing one uh, song of Gomidas now, and it is about Chengizar also. Come on here, come on here, sing this. The incense tree is Lamb of God. That's what we heard. Uh, so that uh, imagine how much uh, our, our good people, villagers, um, uh, loved Chengizar and respected Chengizar. Um, next uh, is a medley of five little songs which I selected and arranged together from uh, the last volume of uh, Gomidas, which was the 14th volume. Uh, the subject is nature. It says the river water is frozen. My sword has exhausted my hand. Nigh, nigh, nigh. I am in love. My dear sister, I'm hurt. Nigh, nigh, nigh. May God protect your brother. Why, le, le, le. I wish you burn, dear Sapor, and Mary Baruch. The partridge is standing on a stone, nigh, nigh, nigh. Its beak is bleeding, nigh, nigh, nigh. And finally, it ends with a happy rhythmic love song, Mara Lo. Uh, as I said, I, I put these together and uh, it's little short songs, but uh, it, is a, it, it's, it, it is a very ni nice kind of, uh, follows nice melody and rhythm that you will hear if I find it.
putting, you know, this harmony needs to go with this, or the rhythm here is going a little bit faster, over here we need to go slower. No, 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 they don't care about those things. Whatever comes from heart, just give it out. What words come in, just say. And he talks to everyone, everyone, everyone he talks to us. Um, so um, with that, uh, just a sample of his um, um, folk songs. Uh, now um, I will um, start uh, about sacred music practice. So the sacred music, oh, I, I even forgot to oh, sorry, uh, change these things. So, sacred music practiced during comedians. Uh, the music of the church was monophonic with a single melody dominating the service. Catholicus Kevork IV had already made efforts to unify church, uh, church singing and hired music teachers and musicians such as Negovaya Stashtian to note the charagans and teach them to seminarian. The divine liturgy music, the sharak notes hymnal, and the music of the hours notated by Negovos Tashtian were published in 1874 and uh, 1875. And at that time, no organ or instrument was used uh, for accompaniment in the church at that time. Komitas's first attempt to compose a song was from a text written by a third year seminarian named Arshak Tashtian in 1891. And um, uh, this is the song um, that was published in the same year, 1891, in the Arat periodical of Ejmiadzin with the Lemongian notation. Uh, this was Sogomidas' first publication. Um, and I'm sure you should know this song. It's what is called the uh, Askaim Ortet, Amen Hai Sertiz Pechat. You know this song, or those who are singing in a church they know you know this song but not this version this version um, is um, the first version that he composed so um, if you uh, let me just sing this that you know how this first version was because everybody I'm sure knows the second version yeah the um, Sound, uh, let me just, I'll, and, and there is a uh, notated version of that too, if you can see. Amen, hai sertins pachat, l'sir ash sain o vastvat, yergar kyanktu, hai
seminarians shouldn't even touch a, a music or something. This is, this, what is this you wrote? And, uh, and they gave, you know, this uh, conservatory people at that time gave very hard time. So he got discouraged, I guess. Uh, four years after, uh, he uh, did another version, which is this version. So, and, and then this one, I guess everybody loved. Um, so this was, um, um, what I wanted you to uh, know. Now, uh, another favorite song of uh, Hrimian ha uh, Heidi. Uh, this was actually, this was also uh, written for Hrimian Heidi. Um, another uh, uh, favorite song of Hrimian Heidi was called Aravot Musafir. Uh, Gomidas arranged this song for four voices. Um, and here I have uh, two verses for you here. It says, Aravot Musafir Hayastan Yerkir. So the morning brings light to the land of Armenia. From the northern side, a field thick with fragrant flowers. The former illuminator and bearer of shining crown, Apostle Thaddeus, why have you gone so far? And this continues with every refrain saying, Apostle Thaddeus, why have you gone so far? And the reason for that, Manuka Berian actually tells us about that. Um, Manuka Berian um, says that uh, he heard the following story from uh, Catholicos Crimean Heidi. Uh, he says, once one of our patriarchs questioned uh, Peshti Malgian, who had written uh, many books about the church and its saints. Peshtimajan also was teaching at the seminary in Istanbul. Um, so they questioned him uh, why he had praised all the saints except St. Thaddeus. Um, and the response was that St. Thaddeus slipped his mind because he was uh, from the first century and too far back uh, in time for him. That's why he didn't write anything about St. Thaddy. Uh, however, a few days later, he came up with a prayer for him that started with uh, this, this poem, the morning brings light to the land of Armenia. And then the last verse, Apostle Thaddeus, why have you gone so far? Um, so this prayer was the, uh, then approved, set to music and song. Uh, this was one of the favorite songs of Catholic Crimean Heidi. Komitas first attempted, uh, I mean, um, yeah, uh, Komitas, um, this was not by Komitas, but he arranged for uh, four voices. And uh, um, if I can sing that for you just a little bit, um, that you know, it's a beautiful song. It goes. Aravut lusape hayastan yerkri. I can't, I can't read my text here. It's, it's a very kind of, I have to read it from there. Um, just uh, get the text. Okay. Aravut lusape hayastan yerkri. Urastan tzakka ki kogman tiusisi. Akin lu savorish pesak pantali, ate o sarakyal anter kasheri. Oh, 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 oh,
sui cagioi. Doro ti am sol po coen za scarcarare, por comiana na schilo smessa chete. Sul cui senza hanto terkin sverate, a te o sara chialan tercas heri. Attributes this song to Grigor uh, Peshtimachian, um, who wrote the poem. Um, now let us talk about the Divine Liturgy. Uh, how am I doing time? Uh, getting sidetracked and explaining more, and uh, getting a little bit uh, of my. So, um, now uh, Divine Liturgy. We know little about. Divine Liturgy Music in Ejmiadzin prior to Komitas' admission to the seminary. Uh, that is during the time of Catholicus Kevork IV. Remember we said that, uh, which is 1866. We know that the Catholicus was not happy with the overall music tradition of the church and he tried to reform the singing. Uh, he had a good voice. Catholicus himself had a good voice and very good knowledge of music, actually. He, uh, Star, uh, uh, knew all, almost all the shadowcats. Um, and um, he was the one that he ordered uh, Tashtian to come from Istanbul to uh, Echmiadzin, uh, which shortly after he came and he started notating all the uh, shadowcats that Kevork IV was singing. So Kevork IV started singing those that he knew, those shadowcats and all the, even, even the divine liturgy, even the Badrak songs, and Tashtian started noting. Um, and, and this is the 1874 publication of the Divine Liturgy book with Tashtian notation. At that time, we were, we were, losing, losing this, uh, we, we were using this Limongian notation. Um, and, and both Yekmalian and Gomidas used their melodies of Badarak uh, from this book to arrange their Badarak. Uh, so that's why you see very similarities between uh, Yekmalian and Gomidas melodies, uh, because both of them have used the same source. Um, now, in that book, we see there are many melodies, sometimes different versions for Sub Sur, for, for different, you know, and one time, you know, Gomidas used this one and Yekmalian used the other one. So, but both of them come from this book. Uh, now, if I, for example, give you the next slide, this is Sub Sub that Gomidas uh, arranged for treble voices, because at that time, seminarians were little boys and things, and he was uh, writing for them, so it had to be treble voice, um, which is in uh, all the GT. Um, and, and if you see the melody, it's the melody of Yekmalia, which is not Yekmalia, basically. It is from the Kevok the Fourth book. Um, it goes so basically the same melody, right? And then so the same melody basically. Komitas uh, arranged this one too. But we know Komitas's surp surp, which is a little bit different. We know all these melodies that Sub but also Gomitas arranged that this one with this version too at that, that time. Um, now, uh, Gomitas, uh, when he came back, um, uh, organized a four voice travel choir of seminarians and taught them his musical arrangements uh, and, and, and did concerts with those seminarians, actually. And this is why he wrote these songs for those tribal voices. Uh, now, after that, uh, he continued his arrangements of Badarak music in German, uh, 
Uh, and, and while he was in Germany, he uh, did arrangement of songs in German. Um, like, uh, if we see the next song, it is the Harkester uh, that we know, but it is in German. <laughs> which he did in Armenia. But at this time, he didn't do the other German version. He did a different version. So he kind of cut that. In German version, he did the way that Yekmalian uh, that we see in but in his version, he chose this one. Um, so, that uh, he worked with uh, kind of uh, different arrangements. And uh, um, two years ago, uh, actually, um, his German compositions uh, were published in Armenia. Uh, and, and this is the book, very thick book, uh, uh, in a separate volume. It includes more than 60 pieces of sacred and secular music written for instrumental ensemble and voice and piano. So uh, that was published two years ago in Armenia. All German uh, songs. German songs were translated into German. Well, the melodies, basically, he used Armenian, uh, like the, the, the melodies from Badalak. But, uh, but no, some of them are original German, actually. It, 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 it's, it's, it's not. Uh, but, but he used, like, uh, yeah, uh, the German text. You know, it's, it's not. Uh, um, the text is not original. He's, he's the original, yeah. And, and he used, for example, Psalms, you know, to write uh, a, a German piece. Um, so he took from the uh, you know, Bible some, of, some verses. Music. Um, Gomidas began his arrangement of Badarak music during his senior year, studying in Ejmiyat. Uh, he organized as, as a four voice uh, travel and he started um, teaching those, the, his arrangements that he was teaching. In 1907, uh, he had just returned from a successful concert and lecture in Paris. Uh, when he heard Khrimian Hayrik passed away. And since he was very close to Khrimian Hayrik, he decides to do a special song for his service. But he had been absent from the seminary for a long time, uh, and boys, uh, and boys choir that he had established and started, uh, it had basically um, gone away, uh, because boys usually traveled, you know, to their villages in, in they stayed there and they didn't come or they were grown up and, and so he had a very short time to put something together, uh, acquire together and, and do teach them the Badarak music that he was arranging and, uh, uh, and be ready for the funeral service of Khrimian Haidu. Um, he, did in, uh, he did arrange for three voices at that time. And uh, these were the seminarians that he had at that time. Um, on the day of the service, uh, the choir was ready with beautiful singing, and everybody was inspired with this, hearing this, uh, the little voices of these uh, seminarians. Uh, and, and it was very memorable, and, and it is documented in the um, in paper, I mean, uh, periodical, some of the other periodicals at that time talk about that. That, that's the, that was a different voice we heard, a different arrangement of Bhattara. Um, and then in the summer of 1910, Gomidas went to Constantinople. And while he was there, he organized a 300-member mixed voice choir named uh, 
uh, mixed choir uh, named Kusa. He taught them both secular, sacred, and non-Armenian songs and gave counsel. In a letter, uh, again to Markarit Babayan, uh, uh, Markarit Babayan one of, uh, was one of uh, his friends uh, that he had correspondent uh, from uh, Paris, from France, when he was uh, there for some time. And, and they taught uh, and exchanged letters many, many times. Um, and he says that uh, um, he's performing at that time, he said he was performing some Wagner's music and Verdi's music and some of other uh, Western uh, composers. Um, Komidas constantly revised uh, and wrote new versions of uh, his songs. Um, he has several versions of each song for the Bada. Some of them, such as Dervogormia, have more than like, eight, nine per versions. He has three different arrangements for Amen Hai uh, Su. And, and um, this one, um, Um, it's, it's, I'm, I'm not sure, I, I can sing a little bit of this for you to um, get a sense of it if you have not heard. in his article about memories about Gomidas uh, says Gomidas was familiar with not only Armenian music but Turkish, Kurdish and Persian. Uh, that is why his compositions were very dear to our ears. He knew the Muram system. Muram is the Middle Eastern um, um, tonalities and, and scales. So he knew all those Middle Eastern also Mughals. Um, and um, he believed that Armenian folk music and sacred music are very much related to each other, just like brother and sister. Armenian folk music and sacred music are like brother and sister. That's what Gomidan said. And they are written in similar Mughals. Often he would demonstrate those by singing the folk song and then relate the sacred song. We don't have um, uh, any examples of those songs 
he would perform Manu, uh, Manu Gabarian, unfortunately didn't say, you know, this was the song that he was singing and this is the equivalent of the sacred and this is it. But he said that he, he used to sing this uh, Armenian folk song and then the Muram and then the Armenian sacred songs, which all were in one Muram. Uh, and I will try to kind of uh, demonstrate that uh, with uh, this. For example, this uh, guy is playing the Middle Eastern Muram Husseini, okay, which is name of the Muram. And Which is not which is not a big deal for those who are musicians, you know, they can do those things. Uh, but uh, it is interesting that he was saying these are all, you know, our uh, music, the, the sacred, the secular, all sister and brother. Um, 
So, uh, let us uh, go on now. Um, okay. Um, now, um, let's see where I am. But uh, Gomidas um, wanted to publish his thesis actually on, on this, on, on not, not on this, but on, on uh, uh, Murans. And, uh, uh, but uh, he wanted to know first what popular song comes from which area uh, and then compare those. And then um, Gomidas believed that Echmiad's uh, tradition of singing before Kevok the Fort was more pure in its form of being Armenian. He was trying to find out more about it and compose his Badarak based on those old uh, melodic tradition. And then we know that he was studying house notations and he claimed that he um, was able to read uh, one third of the house notation but he was not ready to publish yet. So that's why unfortunately he didn't publish what he knew and he kept it with him and we don't know anything about uh, what he did uh, about his studies of house up until 1915, uh, the selections of Badrak songs were sung during um, uh, concert, uh, were not sung during concert. And Gomidas was uh, actually one of those that encouraged uh, the Badrak songs to be done in concerts, which um, he had a lot of oppositions at that time, even, even Patrick of um, Istanbul, you know, we know that uh, he was uh, against that. but. Uh, but he did. He, he did concert and he brought those uh, uh, church music out of the church and, and uh, other people, for other people to hear those uh, Armenian church songs. Now, um, the Badarak mm, was so important to Gomidas that in 1915, when he was released to come back from deportation, he immediately started working on Amy Apkar's Badarak melodies. He put his music away and he said, you know, I need to study Amy Apkar's Badarak because Amy Apkar was another one that wrote what the tradition of uh, Iran and Calcutta, uh, uh, the Indian uh, church, Armenian church music at that time. Uh, she, she um, put those in a nice uh, three volumes of book, whatever was tradition at that time. And Gomidas was very much interested because he thought that these are actually more ancient melodies than what we have now. Uh, and, and he was trying to work on those. Yep, okay. Uh, then um, Gomidas. Um, was collecting also sacred songs. Um, and, but uh, whenever he was collecting songs, um, he was putting the name of the singer and place that he heard. He has a good collection of these uh, melodies written in separate notebook. Uh, he was planning to print these songs separately. So if you see on the top, it says uh, the song um, was uh, that, that this song that he heard, this is the Havun Havun, and he heard that um, done by uh, Saad Amadun, celibate priest, which was actually his first teacher in, in seminary. Uh, Saad Amadun was his first music teacher at the seminary, uh, seminary when he was studying. Uh, and, and this is what he heard. Um, and, um, Havun Havun is a resurrection melody that you can sing uh, during melody of any resurrection Sunday. Um, and uh, it says, um, uh, it's a kind of allegoric uh, um, figure of the fowl and the dove, refer to humanity and the divinity, uh, and calls for Christians and pagans to join Christ in order to live the eternal life. The translation goes, the fowl, the fowl awakened, watching pagans, 
called for, called for the dove, nourished with love, the beloved one. Um, let me just uh, uh, do a little bit of this too for you. Church Melodies, uh, published in Alara periodical in 1894. Gomidas describes a different genre of church songs such as Dog, Tans, and then he publishes his resurrection melody, Ahel Tzai, Fearful Sound by Naregat. Just like all church songs, the story of this song is from the Gospel account when Christ descended into the underworld and freed those who had gone before him. This is a song under the heading of Yes Tsein Zaryu Tsun Asen. I say about the sound of the lion. It's a very long song and it is usually not sung completely. The last line is usually more popular and done often on a resurrection Sunday also. Uh, and this is the translation. You have this fearful sound. Um, I heard, subdued my strength. It seeks to despair me, to grant release to those enslaved. And uh, it goes. Oh, hey. Komidas' uh, contribution, um, it is, it is a very, very great. Uh, by collecting songs, notating them, and writing new music, uh, writing Badarak, 
performing them by singing himself or through his choirs. He introduced the Armenian sacred song tradition to the secular world by performing sacred songs side by side with secular songs and in concert halls outside churches. That is why we became popular. Uh, by his lectures and concerts in Europe, he introduced Armenian music to musicians around the world. He was familiar with both Western Armenian culture, where he was born, and Eastern Armenian culture, where he studied. He collected songs from both, sorry, um, um, cultures and saved them from elimination. Through his compositions and arrangements of songs, he established a national style of music and, compos and composition unique to now, we should note that in 2018 and 2019, the 39th session of the UNESCO General Conference held in Paris, France, decided to include the 150th anniversaries of Komitas and, and Hovanesh Tumanyan in the UNESCO calendar of anniversaries of eminent personalities and important events of 2018. Um, so with this, I would like to end uh, this evening's talk with a song that Gomidas wrote for his friend, Armenak Shah Muradian, the great tenor of the time. Um, Gomidas, uh, we should know that Gomidas did not write many compositions by himself. Um, that means both text and the music by himself. Uh, he arranged many songs. Uh, they existed melodies that he was getting from peasants and villages. He basically arranged those. So the melody was not by him, but he arranged for choir and uh, different instruments. <coughs> now, this song that I'm going to sing, it is his work. It is one that it is, he, he basically wrote a handful of songs by himself. That means the text and the music was by him. Um, and this one, that he wrote for Armen Akshah Muradian is called Hayastan, Armenia, and um, is a song that he wrote um, uh, for, um, because, because Armen Akshah Muradian had this beautiful tenor voice that he was in, uh, Komidas loved it, and, and that's why he wanted to dedicate this song to him. And uh, it is a patriotic song, describing Armenia being the place of paradise. The, uh, let me just put this on. You will see the uh, translation there. Um, the cradle of humanity, he says, you are in my heart. Your great name gives me strength and courage. You are my only hope. Armenia, and this will be the last song that I'm going to do for you this evening. And thank you for staying this long. <coughs> Oh, <laughs> 